This is our Forex blog for September 21st, 2012. And like we do most days, the first step of our easy three-step Forex trading system is to use our currency meter, which is sortable. You can then sort from the strongest to weakest currencies. Right now, the yen's going up against 100% of other currencies, euro, 85%, dollar. And so basically, you want to buy the strongest ones versus the weak, or if the uh, currency such as the Australian is on top and dollar is on the bottom, you want to sell the weakest versus the strong, depending on which currency is above or below. The real-time trend on the top is made up of multiple different tools. Some of them measure the direction, what up or down, what percentage of pairs are going up or down using multiple different statistical models that we've come up with over the last six years, and other ones measure the intensity. So anytime a currency is going up against 75 to 100 percent of other pairs, and it's doing so with um, 100 to 150, 200 percent, sometimes 300 percent intensity, you're going to see strength at and above this dotted 80 line. Uh, and basically what you really want to look for on the easiest trading days is real-time trend going up. Underneath that on the bottom we have the 15-minute trend, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. So you can see today the yen's going up. However, the monthly trend is very weak. The daily and weekly trend is just slightly down. The hourly trend is still uh, down at that time. Um, so, you know, just be aware you're trading against the longer-term trends. The New Zealand here, you can see the time it's pretty much going up on all time frames and it's a, it's always a higher probability trade when you trade one that's strong on all times time frames versus one that's weak on all time frames like the cat pretty much was weak on all time frames except the daily daily switched down around 430 so when you see some weakness come in at 830 um, let's see this one still has a little bit of strength here you can uh, buy the strong New Zealand versus the cat now this is a currency I don't typically uh, leave running. So let me just bring that over here. Put the New Zealand cat on here. Let me get this out of the screen real quick. And when you have a strong New Zealand uh, weak cat, it's you know going to tend to go up. And you can see, you know, it goes up. And there's basically two main patterns we look for once we identify the currency. One is a sideways rectangle or in this case a wedge pattern it's kind of both in this case uh, and the other one is a pullback where you know once it makes a higher high it pulls back you can draw a trend line over the highs and when it breaks out of that trend line you go long sometimes you're only going to get uh, 5 to 15 pips other times you're going to get you know 20 pips or 25 in this case and the next trade you know went up 10 20 20 or so pips and you can always use fib targets to get out, and it's one of the best exit methods. You can see, especially the more up it goes, the more likely it is to stall at the first fib target. The beginning of a trend, you know, you can be, in, and also the bigger the trend, the more likely the first fib target is going to hold. Our software has a ton of tools that let you know how far the currency normally moves in a given day or during four hours. 1440 shows you the daily uh, statistical high. You can see this it didn't quite make it up to the daily average uh, high today. You can also use hourly and four hours to show you, you know, high odds uh, places to exit your trade. So you can see during this four hour period it stalled right at the four hour average high. And you know, typically currencies when they make a move up, they'll they'll go up, at, you know, to to or very close to in this case the four hour uh, high twice and then you're going to likely get a reversal so you know you can also use these tools to predict uh, likely reversals and that was likely to be the max high especially when it tried to go up one more time and it couldn't even get to the high that was a confirmed you know end of the uptrend and, and as you can see it fell uh, nicely from that point let's look for some other uh, trades today or let's scroll this back uh, one of the features of our software lets you demo trade. Uh, if you click this button and all the charts have the same colored uh, bars on the top right, when you scroll one back, they'll all scroll back with it. So let's, you, you can see the dollar started the day off week pretty much on all time frames. Um, up until about 2 o'clock, it had extreme weakness. Unfortunately, the New Zealand was not strong at that time frame, real time. Really, the best one would have been the pound. 
as you can see the daily trend shifted up the weekly monthly trends very strong there was no I, I like to look for before you know you decide to take a trade what was the strength or weakness before if there's no strength or weakness and the longer term trends up and finally you start to see the most strength you've had over many hours typically that trends gonna continue and it's not about what happened in the past it's about what's likely to happen in the future what happens in the past tends to predict what's likely to happen in the future when you don't have much weakness at no intensity at all to the downside when the daily trend shifts slightly up here it shifts slightly down the weekly monthly trend is very very strongly up uh, you know buying the pound versus the weak dollar uh, makes sense so let's look at the pound dollar earlier in the night you can see even coming up to midnight the pound dollar is quite strong you have this nice pullback you draw your fibs off the previous wave and it, it already predicts where the first and second fib target is Probably 90% of the time, the market does not go and stay above the 2.0 Fib level. So if you bought right here, if it stalls at the first one, I tend to get out of half my trade, and then I use a trailing stop for the other half. If it shoots through there, most of the time, probably 80% of the time, I'm out of all my trade at the 1.618. In this case, it's off the chart strong, and it just keeps going. First sign of it stalling because it already went farther than it should. Here's the previous week's high right here. Uh, it stalled out right here. I would have got out of this trade somewhere at 53. But you're in that trade around... Let's just round up to 20. You made 30 pips on that trade. Now, once it hits the upper uh, containment band, you're more apt to, to want to wait for a deeper pullback, 38 to 50%. So here's the 38% level. If it breaks out over these bars high, you go long. It pulls down a little bit more. I prefer the 50% pullback. I'm going to go long right here at uh, 62.35 with my stop right underneath the low here. I'm risking basically 10 pips. And let me just draw where I would put the stop, just a few pips underneath the bars low. And in this case, the 50% fibs there, so I'm going to put it a pip or two underneath there, just so the noise doesn't get me out. If it comes down underneath that area, more than likely it's going to go much lower. So that's the widest stop I need. And it starts going up and goes sideways right here. I'm going to move my stop underneath these bars low. And then guess what? It takes off. And here's the 1.3 to 2 fib of this big move. Notice this is an 80 pip move. Our fib target now. Uh, Fibonacci tool now shows you how many pips the swing is. So anything over 45, 50 pips, uh, it's very likely to stall at the 1.3 to 2-fib target. You're in this trade right here uh, at, at 40. You made 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 plus pips on that trade. And it's really up to you whether you want to take this next trade. The first containment band, probably 60% of the time, contains price. The 2.0 white band probably contains price 80% of the time. And the white or the green 3.0 band 90% of the time. Uh, it almost never stays above the green band. It can sometimes go 15, 25 pips above it, and then it comes exploding down. So if you want to take trades right near the you know, white 2.0 band, just be aware that you're, it's very likely to stall. Any signs of it not going up, I'm going to probably get out at the close of this bar here at 6,300. So that's only a 10-pip trade. And once it gets above the white bands, you can start looking for counter trend trades. This is, was incredibly strong, so I would have expected maybe it might go up to the 3.0 band. Uh, at this area here, I'd say probably one-third of my trades uh, during the U.S. sessions already trended too far in one direction, up or down. And so I tend to scale in progressively at these 3.0 bands. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart because, you know, a lot of times uh, I would say my average win uh, for those trades is somewhere around 1,000, 1,500, but I've had it be 2,500 against me before it reverses. I tend to scale in so that a 5 to 7 pip move in my direction can get me out of the trade at break even. And so what I mean by that is, for example, I might, uh, if I'm getting in early and I don't want to miss a trade, I might only do one or two lots. If it goes up another 15, 25 pips, especially if it goes to the next fib target, uh, I'm hoping it doesn't go there, but if it does, I might get in uh, three to five lots and then if it goes to the next I always have a worst case scenario if it does go to my worst case scenario I scale into big lots sometimes it goes a little bit beyond that and I'm you know sweating a huge position like I said sometimes it goes you know 2,500, 3,000 against me uh, the only time you uh, really have to worry about it is if it goes against you and you're down money and then the market just goes sideways for two, three, four hours 
Uh, you got to get out of those trades at night uh, because if it doesn't pull back at all, usually the next day it takes another explosive move up, possibly another 80 or 150 pips, and you can wipe your account out uh, doing that. So that's the only caveat if you plan on trading that way. But it is a very high probability uh, method that for me works you know, extremely high percentage of the time just because I'm scaling in. Most of the time you're going to get a five or six put pullback if it, depending on how fast it comes down. So like if I scaled into this right here, this one pretty much came down real fast. I would have got out of half my trade here, came down again, got it, I would have got out at this sideways expecting it to go back up and I would have missed the remaining 20 pips here. But, you know, let's just say I scaled into a trade one lot, two lots, three lots. I got a six lot position. Um, average entry would have probably been somewhere around 97. Um, I would have got out of half here. So I would have made 10 pips on half and 20 pips on the other half. So 15 pips on a big position uh, is a nice, you know, profitable trade. And, you know, when they come down real fast, uh, sometimes you get moves down just as fast as this. If you're in a trade up here and it just keeps going and going, you just hang on with it. When it starts going sideways, get out of half. Uh, you know, I've caught... 30 to 50 pip moves uh, on counter trend trades with huge positions before. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't happen that much because typically people are trying to buy the pullbacks in these strong currencies. And that's why we have these containment bands, uh, to give you those high odds type trades. So let's go forward and see what else we got here. Uh, some currencies that are harder to trade is when, you know, real-time trends up, 15-minute trends up, hourly trends mixed, daily trends down, weekly trends either up or down and the monthly trends up, you know, multiple time frames all conflicting. I'd rather trade the Australian here where all the fast time frames, real time, 15, hourly, and daily are up. You know, so this is, let's scroll here when this starts showing the most strength it's had for about five hours. Uh, I would trade this Australian against the uh, Swiss right here. Swiss is the weakest. The Euro is also pretty weak, but it doesn't, you know, have the same pattern as this. So, Basically, you're looking to um, buy the Australian Swiss. And because the Australian has a weekly monthly trend that's down, you got to be very careful. Uh, you know, shoot for reasonable profit targets, 15 to 20 pips. And uh, let me find that chart here. And this is basically, um, you know, you saw that trend up. Or actually, what was the time frame on this there? Yeah, 3 o'clock. So 3 o'clock, it really showed showed that. If you missed the first uh, entry into this trade, you have a nice little sideways rectangle pattern right here. Uh, typically, I will just kind of shoot for the 1.382 FIB target. But if it shoots through it, I'll get out of the whole trade at the 1.618. So you can see, even if you missed the initial bump, you saw that right at 3, but let's say you missed that and you got in this trade uh, right here at uh, 97.68. Once it stalls up here, you know, you made about uh, 15 pips on that trade, even though you're late. Then you buy the pullback here. You would probably would have got out here when it went sideways with a small profit. Uh, and then when it broke out again, get back in that trade, and you made another, you know, 20 pips on it. The currency meter pretty much tells you which direction to trade in and then you can just simply uh, buy or sell based on um, you know likely uh, pullbacks sideways consolidations and use fib targets or other statistical tools for you know knowing when to get out of trades